I've made a couple of videos on the 30 second rule of open world games over the last two years or so. I've broken down games such as The Witcher 3, Breath of the Wild, Fallout New Vegas, and even Red Dead Redemption 2 to figure out how these games, what many people consider to be some of the best open world exploration RPG games of all time, how they make their game worlds so immersive and interesting to explore. If you aren't familiar with what the 30 second rule of open world games is, that's okay, I'm going to explain it throughout the course of this video, but mainly what you need to understand is it's a coin that was mostly turned by CD Projekt Red during the development of The Witcher 3. Basically, as they were building the world for that game, they found through a ton of testing that players tended to feel the most immersed when moments of interest and intrigue happened roughly every 30 seconds or so. So what that practically means, according to CD Projekt Red, is that while you're on Roach and you're riding through the wilderness, you can encounter either points of interest, points of encounter, or communities. And those are the three basic pillars that make up the game world. And based on how these are spaced out within the map, you either are going to feel more or less immersed, at least according to their testing. So my approach to verifying all of this and exploring how other open world games handle density of moments of interest is I actually go through roughly an hour to two hours of gameplay and I have a stopwatch and I basically track every time something pulls my attention away from what I was doing. I'm not doing this while I play, instead I record the hour or two of gameplay where I'm just trying to explore the world, and then I time it out after the fact so that I don't interrupt the flow of focus and concentration and try to keep it as natural as possible. Then I bring everything into an Excel file, I do descriptive analysis and analytics on it, run a bunch of numbers, and it spits out a ton of different calculations. And then in these videos, I basically interpret the data. And the really cool thing about all of this is that some of those initial impressions that you'll get with a game, such as the fact that it feels kind of bland or boring or too spread out or something like that, can be borne out by the facts with the numbers with these calculations. So it's not just a matter of personal impression, it actually is an empirical fact based on the density of the world with these tests. The point of all of this is that usually somewhere between 30 and 40 seconds is where a game's open world wants to be in order to make players feel the most immersed. However, this isn't always the case as I made a video entirely dedicated to Red Dead Redemption 2 because their moments in between moments of interest while exploring on average are double that of The Witcher 3 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey and other big open world games. It's roughly 80 seconds for that game. And if you wanna see the video breaking down those numbers, I'll have it linked in the description. And that brings us to this video today. You see, I've been playing through the Batman Arkham series over the last few months in preparation for all sorts of critiques and analyses that I'm doing on those games. They're some of my favorite games of all time, and so I decided to deep dive into them, and I've been playing through Batman Arkham Knight and Origins over on Twitch. Links below if you wanna check out those videos. That sounded weird. Videos, videos. If you wanna check out those videos and streams, links below. <laughs> But while I played through all four of the games, Batman Arkham Asylum, City, Origins, and Night, I found that Origins tended to feel the least interesting of all of them. And I know that's subjective and that's something that I was just feeling and some people will disagree, but based on the impression of other people that were watching the stream live, it seemed as though most people agreed that it was the least impressive of all of the games. And there's a plethora of reasons for this. I'm gonna be doing a long form critique of the game in the next couple weeks. So if you wanna see that, make sure that you subscribe. So I'm not gonna deep dive into it too much, uh, especially the background stuff with the development of the game, but rather what I wanted to do in this video was break down how the world was built and investigate whether or not there's a reason for this. Compared to Batman Arkham Asylum City, Origins and Night, how do all of these work together and how were their open worlds constructed comparatively? So I did the exact test that I just described to you with all four of these games and it's taken a while to complete, but we're done and we're here now. So as you can see here, I pulled all of the data into the Excel document and it's all plotted here and I did it for Asylum, City, Origins and Night and then I ran descriptive analytics and the chart 
and then collected all of that data in one final chart right here, which we're gonna talk about. But there is one quick disclaimer, which of course is that while I go through these moments of gameplay, it's gonna be different for everybody. So I might explore the world of Arkham City differently than you do. So things that pop out and pull my attention away and stand out as moments of interest or encounters or communities are going to be different. So. No matter what we do, these are always going to be somewhat subjective tests, but the fact that I'm the one that's the constant throughout all of these tests should give you a fairly good idea in order to compare them. So I think it kind of cancels itself out, if that makes sense. But to give you a quick rundown on what we calculated here, we have the mean, which is calculated for each of these, and that tells us the average time in between moments of interest. And as we kind of would predict, it, it lines up pretty consistently with what we would expect. Arkham Asylum, which is sort of an open world game, but it's still incredibly linear, lands at about 20 seconds, which is consistent with a linear title. It's not trying to place things super densely and they have a lot of collectibles. So that lines up with what we would expect. Arkham City has a mean of roughly 32 seconds. This lines up perfectly with the 30 second rule that the developers of over at CD Projekt Red with The Witcher 3 were saying was their goal, roughly 30 seconds. With Arkham Origins, the game that we tended to feel, or at least I tended to feel, was the least interesting world of all of those games, lands at 46.7 seconds in between moments of interest. But that's not all, which we're gonna talk about in a minute with the rest of the data that was calculated here. And as we go over to Arkham Knight, we see the time goes back down closer to 30 seconds, right between Arkham Asylum and City, so it's incredibly dense which also explains why it feels more alive compared to a game like Origins. Now, not all of this data means a lot to us, but there are a few things that stand out. For instance, kurtosis and skewness are fairly important to figure out how these tests worked and how well the game was able to maintain my attention throughout. Basically, kurtosis, without going too much into detail with all of this, because this isn't a statistics course video, basically refers to the sharpness of the curve. A regular bell curve lands at zero, positive is more uh, sharp, and negative is, is much more flat. So that tells us roughly how the distribution occurred. Skewness has to do with whether or not the data is shifted to the left or to the right of the chart effectively. So for something such as uh, if we go to Arkham Knight, we can see that this is heavily shifted to the left, which would imply that as at least as I initially was exploring the world, moments of interest were much more spread out. So perhaps I was in a more open area. And as we got further on in the test, things got much more dense and the moments of interest were much more closely compacted next to each other. And so the times dropped leading to a heavy skewness to one side. And again, this is all reaffirmed once we actually look at the videos of me exploring that I did all of these calculations off of. In the early stages of the test, I was doing a lot of just flying and gliding around the city. I wasn't really looking for a lot of stuff. I was just trying to get all around the map and exploring very, very broadly. But as the test went on, I started to really look out for things that were catching my attention because the game started to pull me in and attract me to all of its little details, which is actually kind of a good thing. I don't know really what to make of it. Other than that, the game started to gain my focus and attention the more I played it, which is why I started noticing many more details as the game went on and as that test went on. And again, this is all borne out in the data. The skewness for Asylum City and Origins are all around 0.5. So they're all fairly consistent across the board, which kind of lines up with a test that isn't trying to test any particular moment of the game. It's just general exploring. It's pretty consistent throughout. However, Arkham Knight was able to front load a lot of those moments of long drawn out interest, and then it back loaded all of the detail that was densified within the world, likely just meaning that it pulled my attention in even more as I played over the course of about an hour and a half. And the other thing we need to look at is the standard deviation, which is calculated as a result of the sample variance. We don't really need to bother with the sample variance for this because the standard deviation tells us everything we need to do. But with regards to the standard deviation, basically what it's gonna mean is that whatever the standard deviation is, there's one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations on a bell curve. And within one standard deviation, you can estimate that roughly 68% of your data is going to be collected within that range. So effectively, 
effectively for a game like Arkham Origins, as you can see here, if the mean is 46.7, that's at the middle of that bell curve. And then one standard deviation positive and one negative is going to be roughly 24. So this range increases by up to a minute 10, all the way down towards 22 seconds. And that's a very wide range of data. Again, what this means is that for our entire data set, all of the moments of interest and the time allotments that we set aside, 68% of those are going to fit within a 50 second window around, based around the 46 second mark, which is a very wide window, especially when we compare it to something like Arkham Asylum or Arkham City, which have standard deviations of 9.75 and 16.69, respectively. Translation, it basically just means that Arkham Origins is very, very varied, I guess would be the best word, in the density of the world. And this is, bears out if we look at the chart, it's remarkably even across the board. Some moments occurred at like seven, eight seconds, and then others took upwards of a minute to a minute and a half to occur. It's incredibly spread out, which means it's probably not very focused or consistent. They just kind of threw stuff around the world and hoped that you would find it. Personally, what I find the most interesting about all of this is that Arkham Knight, despite being very large and having an incredibly fast streaming system, which basically just means as you explore the city in either the Batmobile or flying around at incredibly high speeds compared to games like City and Origins, they did incredible tech improvements with it they're able to maintain a standard deviation of 14.1 with a mean of 25, which means it's incredibly focused and narrow. You aren't going to end up with a huge variance between moments of interest, which again, at least to me, would imply heavily that there was an active effort to make sure these moments of interest were densely packed within the world. Whereas in Origins, it looks like they just threw stuff around and hoped that you would find it. There wasn't an active effort to make things consistent throughout the world. So what does all this mean at the end of the day? Well, to me, it kind of bears out exactly what what we were feeling on stream while playing the game in real time. It shows that there's a reason why Arkham Origins world feels much less alive and realistic and it's because they just threw things around they, and they didn't have an active effort in building the moments of interest and points of interest and points of encounters and the different communities of people and things that give a game world life, especially not compared to the games such as City and Night, which had an act active effort implied upon them. And I, I, I just find this cool, I'll be honest. What do we do with this information? Well, I'm not completely sure. I mean, this is more just something that's kind of cool and uh, reaffirms what a lot of people felt. And I think it's, it's borne out in the data. So I guess there's that. But more than anything, I guess while you're exploring the next open world game that you really enjoy and that you find really fascinating, keep an eye out and really try to think through how often things are catching your attention. Usually, What's really cool about just the human mind and games in general, right now at least, with the current technology and the games that we're playing, is that 30 seconds to 40 seconds tends to be the most intriguing and appeal to the widest spectrum of players. Of course, there's exceptions such as Red Dead Redemption 2, which had an average uh, time between moments of interest of around 80 seconds, at least in my testing, there's reasons why that works so well for that game. Again, links to that video down below. But for games such as Batman Arkham Asylum, City, Origins, and Night, it seems as though most people are going to be happiest at 30 seconds. But that's all I've got. Thank you for watching Honestly and Truly. If you have another game or series that you'd like to see me analyze in this way, make sure to leave those suggestions down in the comment section below. The Arkham series was actually born out of initially a suggestion from a viewer just like you. So throw it down in the comment section below. You never know if it'll get it turned into a video. Speaking of, I was going to give that viewer a shout out right now at the end of the video, but it looks like his account was deleted or he deleted his comment. I, I just can't find it anywhere. So, oops, his name was David, if, if that helps. Thanks, David. You go, dude. <laughs>
But that's all for me. Like I said, I've got another critique on Arkham Origins coming out very soon. So make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see that. And as always, if you want to follow me on Twitch, see all of these games and discussions and analyses before they go up on the YouTube channel while they're happening in real time and hang out with me. We have a great time. Links below. But thank you for watching, honestly and truly. I love you all more than you could possibly know, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Thank you.